Help! 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 This may be the voice of the 12 boys and the young man who are still trapping inside the cave in the northern of Thailand 10 days ago. Actually, this why nobody heard this voice, but uh, the missing one has been noticed by the local authority, and the rescue team is quickly organized and, and rescued them. But their story has been heard. It's not only in Thailand, but uh, to the people around the, the world. Their story is touching many people's heart to feel the same hardship and unhappiness that the boys and the family has. The story is calling for action that urges someone to volunteer and helping and giving some hand in order to make sure that the, the boy will be safe. Change happens when someone takes action. So today, I'm going to, to talk about how we can make some changes to architecture by using our uh, profession to, to make the, some difference. My name is Joseph Bonbunsom from Shema Company Limited in, from Thailand. There are many people around the world who are ordinary people that make some uh, contribution to the world. One might fight for equality, freedom, city, tree, health, kids, or for the river. They fight for something they love. If they know that something that is their love is going to be eliminated or to be destroyed, they will, they will use their own ability to, to protect them or even fight them back in order to make sure that uh, their loved one will be safe. Like the governor in, in those provinces, they, they tell the rescue team that things like the boys are your own kids. They are in danger. Fight them. Those calling for help is everywhere. It's whether are we hear the, those voices. Do we really care those voices? So my calling, I actually grown up in Bangkok City. The, the, the memory that I have with my city is about a chaotic city. Flooding, traffic jam, and probably this is my picture of uh, going to the school every day and sometimes I need to go back through the flood. Um, the water, uh, I need to walk back home through the water. But I'm lucky that I was also been raised in the countryside where I learned how to live a simple life with the natural environment near the river. And I also realized that Thailand is not perfect. There are inequality, exploitation, unfairness, ignorance, corruption. So those are the systems that cause many problems that persist today. As a kid, it keeps me wonder why can't we have the society where the city can live in harmony with the nature, where the people can live inclusively, happily, and equally. So as a kid, I use my drawing as well my expression of hope. So I keep drawing the picture of the beautiful city, beautiful house, with the people smiling. I believe everyone here draws the same thing like me. The people in that picture is someone you love and the family because you want them to be happy in the, in, in the city that you are living together. And later on, I find that there is one profession that helped to transform the city and helped to realize the dream to become the reality, which is the architect and land. So myself is a landscape architect. So the difference is that the paper is gone. The earth has become the paper. So we can draw the reality. So I keep drawing. I keep practicing the beautiful city that I want to, to live in the future. So it's like the calling that um, I touched, uh, which touched on me and drive me for the past um, 40 years in um, and doing my work. But later on, I realized that uh, for the past five years, at the beginning of my career, I've been doing the beautiful, beautiful, thing, beautiful things, not transforming the place. It's about beautify the place. And I'm becoming the, the marketing tools in increasing sales 
not improving people's life. And I was asked to design the landscaping around the building. And I realized that the more I do, the more city become isolated because most of my work is focusing on the development of the isolated buildings. So we are actually become part of the problem's creations. And if you think about that, what we have been doing is just so little. It's just the tip of the iceberg. So there are so much uh, problems that uh, the world and the city is facing. There are many people are still waiting for us to, to give the hands and use our profession to, to make some changes. So Bangkok is my city. It's been developed from the resilient with flood in the past like a water bear city to become the, like a solid city where we no longer be able to live with water anymore. The city was been, has been designed for, for cars, so there's no place where people can walk easily. It's filled with uh, utilities, vendors, and motorcycles. The more we expand the city, the more trees will be eliminated as well. And we have a lot of uh, unutilized space in the city center because of the way we develop the infrastructure in the city. We do have some parks, many, some parks, but the park is not a desirable place to, to interact. Look at this um, chair, nobody wanted to use it. Look at the design that prohibiting you from doing many things that you should do in the park. And we have a lot of uh, decaying uh, district which has a lot of heritage and uniqueness way of life, but is still waiting to be developed. And the growing population has come with the new generations and also having a lot of uh, aging population nowadays. So it's going to shape the way we develop the city in the futures. And of course, we're facing the flood and Bangkok is sinking because of the climate change. So in the next 10 years, Bangkok will be completely flat. So what the government did is that they built the wall on both sides of the river in order to protect the city from flooding. But the consequence is that uh, it's also destroying the river, the river way of life that we have been, um, it has been there for many generations. So all this um, evidence of the water city will be gone in the near future. And lastly, as a citizen in Bangkok, we not be able to voice our opinion and be part of the uh, city creations. So it feels like we, we are not part of the city. It's not a surprise that uh, Bangkok is not the, the best city to live, but actually we are the best city to visit. So I think, I, I believe most of you have, have been to Bangkok. And you, some of you might explain those um, uh, pictures that I told you earlier. So the way we design the city, it makes the city become exclusion. And I think it's this time that how we can use our design and our profession to making sure that the city will be, once again, we live in harmony with the people and with the environment, and with the natural environment again. So um, the, the topic and the, the solution that we like to, to look at is about how we can create an inclusive society. I think one thing that we need to remind ourselves is that at the beginning of the, our civilizations, there's no architecture or landscape architecture. The territory works as one ecosystem. So this is what we are living in the, in the past. And I think we need to refocus uh, and making sure that that, um, that position will be uh, developed once again here in the city to making sure that the people can live in harmony with the nature, with, without, um, with, with no boundaries. The first step is that we need to remind ourselves that uh, the city is not the collection of the beautiful buildings or beautiful places, but uh, ec the ecosystem. Ecosystem of the tangible and intangible that we need to really find what are the suitable built up environment that can responding to those behavior, regardless whether they are inside or outside regardless whether they are architecture or landscape architecture. And we need to invent and innovate new things like this guy. 
they want to navigate to the city during the flood, so they combine the motorbike with the boat. So it becomes the new invention that uh, responding to the uh, emerging challenges that uh, we are facing. The third one is that we need to really find how we can use the remaining or the new space to become the public realm and encouraging people to, to be interact and encouraging nature to, to occur in our city. And of course, we need to recognize the existing asset that the city has. So we need to build upon that asset because we want the city to still keeping the uniqueness of the place. The, 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 the asset could be the people, it could be the, the, the material, it could be the, the space itself, and the, it could be the way of life of the people as well. And we need to develop the new way of uh, building the city, changing from top-down process to be like a co-creation process, whereby everyone sit on the same table and having the dialogue and having a discussion to form the vision and create a, the, the better city. And of course, we need to find the new tools. New tools to understand the people, new tools to making sure that the people can speak out their opinion and their voice. And then we can use that information to transform and turn it into the reality. And of course, our role as an architect or landscape architect need to, to change to become like a facilitator. We need to, to make sure that we listen to them and then we facilitate their need to realize their reality. And to me, architecture or landscape architecture is not only the physical form or the space, but rather the message. The message that uh, we would like to criticize in the society, the message that we would like to inspiring people, creating the conversation and catalyst the changes. And of course, we need to do it in a positive way because we want everyone to, to collaborate. So we show you um, the, the projects that I've been working for the past 10 years as a company. And the first one, the, the, the first topic, the challenges is about the climate change and the flooding that Thailand was um, very, um, uh, is facing every year. And it was hit, um, uh, the flood catastrophe was hit uh, in 2012. This is the UTR province, and we've been asked to look into the, the research of how we can live with water in the futures. So this is what happened on, on site. So we look at the, 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 the project and went out to the site and see what happened. So basically, we are actually the city situated in the floodplain area. So the water will come down anyway, no matter what. So the city will be flat because we keep building the, the city in the floodplain area. It blocked the waterway. But actually what we have that, uh, that, this, that the area has is an agricultural area that it can be developed and utilized at the water detention area in order to contain the flood. So we use this idea and develop it further to equip, equip it with the more facility in the dive system and then utilize the flood during the flood season to be some, something that can benefit the farmers that can turn into the uh, agricultural products and it, it can turn into the, um, the, the energy during the flood seasons. So basically we deepened uh, existing agricultural land and then consolidated all the built up area to be at one location because it's going to be like a um, um, transportation uh, hub in the, in the near futures to making sure that most of the land will be free for, for flood in the futures. We think that uh, during the flood season, which is we take like uh, three to four months, we can turn those uh, water and utilize them into the water agriculture and uh, utilize them to 
to, to provide uh, the green energy for, for the rest of the city. So we don't see flood as a threat, but uh, in this proposal we see flood and embracing flood as an asset that uh, ev um, everyone can and benefit from it. And those are the vision that we have um, for the research that uh, we did. But we took that research as a world initiative idea that uh, to, to build uh, this uh, public park in the, um, at the periphery, at the, near to the Bangkok city, at the edge of the Bangkok city. This is the, the floodway that, uh, that the government will um, uh, uh, drain the, the flood water during the flood seasons. So the park will be act like uh, the green infrastructure to contain the flood for three months. So we propose to dig out uh, the, the larger pond and then use that uh, pond to become like a, um, a um, recreational area and become like an educational area as well. So this is under the construction right now and it's going to be completed uh, by the end of this year. And, and during my sidewalk, I found that the, the nature started to, to, to reclaim back. So it's quite nice that uh, we actually walk onto the boardwalk and let the, the nature uh, took over and, and the pond itself will act as a green infrastructure during the flood seasons. So for the footpath, we actually um, uh, try to, to send some message to the society by organizing some of the, the workshop with the students. And the students and our team come up with the idea that why well, don't we construct like a pop-up park in, uh, along the footpath. So the footpath actually become like a public space so that we can sit down and do many activities. <laughs> So why can't we use the footpath for something else besides walking? Why, that, why can't we use the footpath as a recreational place? So we took that initiative idea and turned into the reality in Saturn Road in the city center. So in the city center, they have the canal and, and we, we need to turn the, and we want to utilize, improve the canal and also improve the footpath by using the, 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 the green area uh, to, to increase more green area and provide uh, um, the more biodiversity and improve the, the quality of the, the water in the canal by introducing more bio uh, cleansing and also the equipment to, to clean up the, the water. So now that the project is under the, underway and the government is, um, tr um, is uh, funding the, the projects and um, I think it's going to start the work in the next couple of years. So it takes time to, to be developed. And the next project is about questioning whether can we uh, um, make the, can we combine the nature with the buildings and can the buildings act like a tree? Because the more we construct the building, the more the, um, tree will be eliminated. So actually this project is about criticizing the, the public policy because at the moment the public policy is not counting the vertical green as part of the green area. So it is not um, very feasible in the very high density of the city center like Bangkok. Why can't we use all the surface to be the green area and then we can benefit from it. So this is like a small exhibition in uh, the um, shopping mall in the uh, central world. And each uh, planter plate we put down that how much uh, carbon dioxide they, they can observe, they can, they can op, op, absorb. So each plant has certain quality and sh certain uh, ability to absorb the carbon dioxide. And we took that initiative to, to the projects. So actually this is a typical uh, um, request from the client that uh, they want us as a landscape architect to um, do the, um, the landscaping around the building. But I, told the client that actually we can wrap the whole building and become the landscape in itself. Because if you think about that, your building can turn and into something that can facilitate and mitigate the environment and, and climate in the city center. 
So we not only design the, the, the landscape on ground, but we, we try to interpret and find the new solutions and, and, and combine it with the architecture. So we designed the skin of the, the whole things and it become like a, the lantern during the night. And, and it provides not only, the, the, it's not only benefit the, the, the selling point to the projects, but also benefit to the city as well. And, and my um, message to the, the city is keep uh, coming. So we took another design competition to design the museum. And we are the lead designer. Probably it's, it's my first time that become the lead designer in design the building because it was not uh, given, the, the brief is just uh, to, to design the, 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 the public uh, museum for the king. So we think that why don't we turn the whole building into the, the park instead of having the the landscape around the building, but uh, this time the landscape is, will be on top and everywhere on the buildings. So the, book, the program will be inside and the landscape and the public realm will be reclaimed back by using this um, roof of the building and turn it into like uh, the, park, the plaza and the park. We not actually um, uh, won the design competition, but uh, that idea keep uh, coming back. And I think two years ago, we did this uh, mock-up for the um, house, the idea for the future uh, living space. So we took that idea of uh, turning the, the house into the garden, into the, the landscape. And this is like a, the typical house that we would like to see in the future, where you, you turn the skin of the building into the, the, the landscape and become the nature. So the more you build a house, the more nature in the city will be created. This is uh, the picture from inside. So we want uh, the, 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 the space of the city or, the, or that uh, everything can be combined, the inside and outside nature and, and, uh, and the buildings. And we went uh, took the, some idea to turn into reality. So this is uh, the roof garden in one of the, the condominium that we did. So they are separated, but we want to uh, op propose the idea that why don't we combine them and turn the whole um, roof garden into the, the small hill, the small mountain in the sky, where people can benefit from it and they can see the panoramic view of the Bangkok skyline. Another project is about uh, questioning whether can, can the park nowadays compete with the shopping mall? Because I think if we want to create an inclusive society, we want to make sure that the quality of the public space is, is, is good enough that can compete with the shopping mall. So this is a Magasan, which is the empty and abandoned land um, owned by the railway um, um, authority in the city center. And, and there was an idea that uh, from the government that uh, the government would like to turn the whole thing into the complex shopping mall office buildings. And people are questioning. And we joined a social group or activist group to to raise a concern to the society whether, whether it can turn into the park. But we just don't want the, just a typical and normal park. And we took our in initiative to propose something to, to raise uh, awareness and bring up the conversation to the society. So this is the area, and it used to be at the periphery edge of the city, but now because the city it, it, that keeps expanding, it becomes like in the city center at the moment. So it's like a railway yard. There are a lot of uh, existing um, railway uh, factory and, 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 and historical building. So the idea is that we can have both shopping mall, museum, and learning space for the people, but it can be tucked in inside under the green roof. So the, the park will be remain as a green space and still act as the in green infrastructure in collecting the water and helping the the city to mitigate with the flood water during the flood seasons. So the, the railway yard still maintain, and most of the, the built up environment will be built underneath the, the green roof. So I think we can achieve both. I mean, you have the park, you have the, the green um, energy as well, and you can turn the, and you can utilize the, the space underneath the, 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 the green roof into the, the public space for, that's suitable for tropical climate. And on top, you can turn into the urban farming or many functions. 
And of course, you have the water detention area to act as uh, the green infrastructure that help the city. So sometimes this is not, uh, we don't have the client. The client is uh, the, the, the people. When the city has their own agenda, we want to give a hand and give them ideas as an architect to raise the conversation and see whether is it possible. Is there any possible, is, and I, that just to show the possibilities and raise a conversation that the people that keep uh, uh, discussing. So we're hoping that in the near future, this land will be developed in the right direction with the people involved. Another project is about questioning and raising some inspiration to the people as well. We talk about much of the, the park. And this is the kind of the, the park that they want to see. The park doesn't necessarily to be like a flat land and don't have any many interesting things inside. But we would like to combine many activities inside the park and make the, make the space of the park to be more three-dimensional and make it more interesting to attract more people, new generations to, to, to be there. So we use the, the park as a green carpet and, and tuck many activities and function inside like uh, um, parking space, cafe, library, and then on top would be some of the, the water detention area and green, green spaces as well. It's at a design competition, and this is at uh, Jilalongkorn University. So the cafe will be tucked inside here, and then the library is will be there. The, 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 the car park is over there, and some of that will be true ground. So we think that this could be the way we would like to look at the, 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 the territory as the, the same territory that we can twist and turn into something that responding to the people behavior and also natural behavior at the same time. Of course, we didn't win the design competition, but the, re, the idea of that surface to maintain and we took that into our projects for one of the condominiums in the city center of Bangkok. So we play with this uh, surface. And the way we design uh, the, the boundary is no longer just the boundary wall, but we want to interact with the public as well. So it becomes like a sculpture and, and, and enlarge the, the footpath to be even larger when we walk along this and give some statement or interesting thing for the projects, for the client. And then this surface still continue to inside. And it combined with the green and, and become like a focal point or something that you know, keep uh, people wondering what is actually the green surface, what is actually the, the, the landscape. So it raised some possibilities that actually we can add more green space and make it even more interesting by combining some creativities. The next project is also um, it is about uh, uh, finding the solution with the people of how we can turn some of this utilized, unutilized space in the city center, like a expressway, to become the, 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 the connecting park. I think for the last five years, uh, people are interested in having the, the, the um, um, jogging, like an urban, urban trail in the city center, but we don't really have the, the proper jogging area or the park connector. So this is called the, the 10 kilometer projects. So it's also our initial pro project. We don't have the client, but we took in our in own initiative to, to, to test the run for 10 kilometer. This is our staff and our colleagues. So, so this is Jaduchak Market. So if you run along this line underneath the expressway and connecting to the Javia River. So I think this is a that has a lot of potential to pass through many uh, districts and that it can become the tools in, util in, in revitalize that decaying district at the same time. And it can become the, the line that connecting many green spaces along the way. at the uh, uh, market, the park is on the right, so we start from that uh, MRT. So we found out that 
this is a possible area linked by the canal that can, can turn into one of the, the park connector just behind uh, the market. Actually, we have quite a large uh, space to, to turn into the park connector by this uh, uh, canal. And it can connect it to many areas along, along the way. But right now, those areas are utilized. And But we are lucky that uh, part of that uh, uh, idea has been um, realized by the local authorities that we also been involved in, to be part of the team as well. So it's, it's run for two kilometers underneath the expressway. And we work as a group to, to talk with the uh, four communities around the, the park and to come up with the idea of how they want uh, the park to be. And this is called participatory process. And after that, we, um, there are, uh, um, we, we have realized that in reality. So this is how it looks. So we combined it with a bicycle lane and um, some facilities for the, the, the communities like a library and um, uh, community spaces. So we're turning the unutilized space to be the, the, the desirable space for the people. It becomes the public space. For, for old people, for the kids. And, and because uh, there are the, the existing activities there, but uh, it's lacking of the facilities like a sport ground. So this could, t could turn into the, the sport area and it can turn into some of the cultural uh, venue in, 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 some of the, in some of the vegans. And because of that uh, participatory process, we don't all, we're not only designing, but uh, we're not only asking the people, we're asking them to give their hands and to be part of the, the projects. So it makes them feel belong to the projects. And, and now it's about to, to be open in the next couple of months. And that, uh, that, that uh, the project also um, uh, taught me that um, uh, em by empowering people, the result has uh, changed a lot, and, and it's not only changed the, the, the space, but it's also empowering people and changing the way people will be uh, react or has their, their own uh, uh, um, initiative with, with the project. So this is another project. We work with the community as well. This is a, a public uh, housing. So we've been there and then using the co-creation process from the beginning in asking what they want and try to find the possible location that it can accommodate all their needs. By talking with the people, you can come up with your very specific ideas. It's, it's not only that. And, and, and then from, from that, we organized uh, the, the zoning in the park like an uh, outdoor uh, tourist, and each tourist has their own functions. So this is a small community park. So we have created uh, different tourists that, uh, for different functions of the, the, the program that uh, the community wants. This is how it looks. So it doesn't look like the typical uh, park that uh, in, in Bangkok City because we combine with something like a very domestic elements like a timber look uh, material and to make it like a tourist, like a Thai house. Because imagine that people who are living in the public uh, housing, living in a small uh, unit, they want something that really relating to, to their memory. It's about the Thai place, the, the Thai garden. So we want to give them that kind of the atmosphere and feeling. So after the, the project completed, there are many activity happens. The kids come to, to play, which is from the nearby school. And the old people have their place to, to enjoy. And, and the things have changed from the unutilized space that they become like a, uh, the drug area for the, the teenagers. So now become like a community space. We did a one interview with the communities, with, a, with, this, with this lady. She said, 
she is very glad and happy and very proud. So this word is so is very meaningful to, to me and to, to the designer because we're not only designing the, the place that changed their, their life, but uh, that, that we give them some respect. She feels that she, she, she has some respect because she, her idea has been transformed into reality. So this park nowadays has been managed not by the government, but by co-managed with the community as well. So this kind of co-creation process is not only constructing the physical space, but constructing and grooming the, the people to, 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 to empower and to be part of the project at the same time. So we're using that idea and to try into uh, turning the, the, the district into to be more desirable because we have a uh, quite a lot of decaying district in the city center. And th then this one is by the Japuya River. And uh, the brief is that we want to turn it into the creative um, district because Thailand Creative and Design Center is going to be there. And there are a lot of existing um, evidence of people of uh, turning some of the warehouse and shop house into the studio for their creative activity um, nowadays. So with this in new incubator, it's going to take place in this um, uh, post office building. We want to, to make sure that uh, the whole district will become like a ecology or ecosystem in grooming the people to do the uh, creative business. So if you look around in the city, the people, the people are so creative. They can find a way to hide their dustbin. They can find a way how to uh, uh, protect the customer from mosquitoes mos mosquito by using the, this net. So why don't we work with the people and use the process to get the creative idea from the people from the beginning in discussing of what they want, what are the problems of the district, and then forming the idea and, and importantly, realizing into reality for them to try on. So it took us nine months from the beginning and making sure that all the stakeholders will be in the same conversation in, to, to have the, the dialogue, like a landlord, the government authority, the kids, the school's children, the teacher, the airport. So everyone will have the, their own uh, idea, their own constraint. So let them talk and have the discussion and conversation. So along the process, they are the one who decide what they want. They are the one who decide which project they want to implement it first, which are the priority. So at the end, we as a group come out with the three strategies. The first one is about rebranding by turning one of the historical buildings along the Xiaopia River into the, like a landmark to make people notice that uh, this will be the, the new district. And, and the second one is about revival, some of the abandoned land and actually, we have quite a lot of abandoned land in the, in, in the district, and, and we try to utilize that to be like a pocket park. And, of course, and also, the utilize and revive, revive old, uh, abandoned building as well, to, and turn into like a public function. And the last one is about Li-Ling, to making sure that all the blockage will be removed, and making sure that the, the, traf the, the pedestrian traffic will, can help people to navigate through the, the district easily. So this is one of the, the projects that we would like to turn. This uh, historical building is a custom house along the Jamra River. It's been there for 100, uh, more than 100 years. And it should turn, I think in some, I think I believe in Singapore, in Malaysia, or in Penang, you would turn this into the uh, museum or something else, right? But it's not in, in Bangkok. They're going to turn this into the five-star hotel. So unlucky. But we would like to see that change. We would like to see that mentality change, that this kind of building should turn for the public uh, interest. So let's look at the mock-ups. So normally, normally when we do the, the, the master plan, we will end up like a book, that nobody really feels what it's going to be like in the future. But at this time, we want the communities, the government, and all the stakeholders to have the feel and can explain what they've been working for the past nine months. So we did a mock-up. This is a model that uh, did it by the, the, all the stakeholders, with the kids, with the, 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 the landlord. And they want to see how the, the footpath in the district will be like. So we did a try the, 
the, the trial of, of that route by organizing the, the trip and the tour during the, the, the mock-up days. And we also organized, uh, uh, this is uh, the mock-up for the, the abandoned buildings and turned into the uh, workshop space. And this is one of the, the mock-up in, in front of the post office. It used to be like a concrete and empty, it's nobody used it. Once we constructed this mock-up, everybody happy. The communities come because the, they, they know nowadays that they, you, you, they can use the, the government land and turn into the, the public space. But unlucky, the government doesn't like it that much. So it's no longer be there. It's only be there for seven days. Just a day, it's a daydream for the Bangkokian, but uh, we hope that it will be back some days. And of course, there also is the idea from one of the, um, the ideas that you, you can't put a tree in front of the historical building because it's going to block the facade. So I don't know where so that idea has come from, but uh, everyone loves it, especially the, the, the kids and the community. They love the green and the, the shade that uh, the tree provides. And this is a public space along the river and along the riverfront. So we're constructing this um, stage and organize some dance and concert. So now, during that time, everyone in the district aware that actually they have the public space, they have the waterfront space, but at, but at the moment nobody use it because there's no design, there's no function, there's no programs. So we hope that in the future, it will, it will turn into reality some days. I think if you've been to Bangkok Design Week last year, some of the project has already been constructed. So I think in the near future, some of it, the initiative will be in place. So those are the, the projects that we've been doing as the company. And three years ago, I have another calling. It's from the river. But this calling is quite strong this time. It's from the television, probably not the same television that I have as a kids. But the message is from my prime minister. The, my prime minister told us that, uh, dear people, I'm presenting you the promenade in the Japaya River. So at, at that time, I was shocked because if you've been to Bangkok and you experience the Japaya River, you know that you're not going to be able to build a promenade inside the river. It's going to destroy everything. As a landscape architect, it's like a big calling to me because this is like a 57 kilometer in Bangkok city and they're gonna build like a 10 meter width of the promenade inside the Japia River itself. And the first phase is about seven kilometer on each side. So the Japia River is not that wide. It's going to shrink the river um, even narrower. It's going to block the waterway. It's going to destroy even worse than the situation of uh, decaying river of the ecology, and it's going to, to turn the river into something else, something like a drainage channel. In the next year, probably, if we can't stop that, you're gonna see this promenade right in front of the, the temple, the palace, and everywhere, with a big column inside the river. No one wants no want it to happen. So from the past, as I mentioned to you, that the way we design the city is like we're removing and the nature from the river. We no longer have that uh, flood um, protection area. We no longer have the riparian area. So the ecology has already gone. Nowadays, we live just behind the wall, the flood wall. But in the near future, they're gonna build another wall, which is the promenade, that's going to make the river even narrower and become completely disconnected to the people and to the city. So we've been to the site because we want to know what has happened. So this is what happened nowadays. If you want to go to the boat or want to uh, come back to your home, so this is uh, the community uh, very fighting very difficulty in uh, convey their way of life along the river. And we talked to this old lady. She has a beautiful house by the river. So what happened is that when she opened her window or her door, what she saw is not a river, but a concrete wall. I asked her what happened. She said, the government built this to protect the city from flooding. She said, what can she say? It's a public interest. She need to give up her own privacy. She need to give up her view. She need to give up her way of life. 
I told this story to my friend who actually supporting the promenade. After, after uh, he heard this story, he said he doesn't want the promenade anymore, even though he thinks that Bangkok needs the public space along the river. So this is what happened. This is uh, Japria River of 200 um, meter in width. We actually facing the problems of not having much of the public space along the river, but um, they are facing other issue, the more priority issue as well, like a flooding. Bangkok is sinking. The quality of the river is uh, polluted. But the government think that this is the main priority to provide a public space for the people, to making sure that everyone can have the 100% access to the river. So next time when you go to Bangkok, what you see is not the way of life of the people along the river anymore. What you see is going to be the, the expressway with the people walking and with the bicycle lane. So I myself with a group of friends, um, found Friends of the River, it's like a social group that we try to become the platform in um, uh, providing the information to the society and providing the platform to, to have the discussion with among stakeholders to, to find what are the solutions in developing the river by not having the, the promenade. So for the past three years, we've been organizing many workshops, many exhibitions, and, and collecting the people opinions. And all of that has been collected and directly um, submit to the government, submitting to the prime minister, and try to have a conversation and dialogue with the government to stop the projects. But the project is not stopped very quickly. We even organized not the protest, the protest in the positive way, in the boat, in the river, and try to, to voice, and making sure that the government hear our voice. At that time, I realized myself that I'm no longer designer. I also play another role as the activist. It's another big word, but uh, I try to, to ad adapt to, to that role. And the idea in developing the river is not about providing the promenade. It's about developing the whole district along the river, to looking at the river as the, as the asset that the city can be benefit from it. So there are a lot of potential inside with the heritage building, uniqueness way of life of the people, pocket space to be discovered. Why don't we look at uh, the district along the river and turn it into something else that benefit the people at the same time? So we took our own initiative to working to, with the one of the community along the river, it's called Ban Boon. So the first step is about finding what are the assets that they have. And then we turn that asset into something else that benefit not only to the community, but benefit to the traveler, to the outsider as well. So it become like a ecotourism that uh, people can learn from, from the community at the same time. So we even organized a festival in the community to show to the government that this could happen if you put the money in this kind of projects by abandoning the idea of the promenade because it's nobody wants it. And probably we can utilize and apply this kind of approach in develop the, the, the community along the river in co-creating with the community and looking at the asset of each community along the Xiaopia River. We hope that this can be one of the possibilities. I think the, the conflict has happened because we see things differently. We value things differently. Some people like the idea of having the promenade along the river. I think this is, 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 is not wrong. I myself, I might want it because I didn't know, aware that what, what, is being, what is there in the river, what, what, what are the people will be affected. But if you ask the people who live along the river, the river they doesn't want it because it will be affected by. This is probably the last uh, boathouse in the Jaguar River that is going to be removed and relocated to, to something else. Many houses will be relocated just to give way for the promenade. And these ladies, like I told you, will be affected. How are you going to balance it? How, what are the values that the society need? 
some developer would like to build a viewing tower just right next to the, the river to increase the commercial um, activities. The government won the promenade because they think that this could be the, the idea to provide it, uh, equality to all the people to, that they can benefit from the river. Probably they think that this is an inclusive way in building the city. The community want to keep their way of life because it's been there for many generations. They don't want it to change. And some of them think that this is the, that make the, the city become uniqueness. And some people think that uh, improving the quality of the ecology in the river is the must because probably this is the first priority. The problem is there's someone who's judging the value for others without having the conversation first. I think this is something wrong in the system that uh, we want to, to change it. I think what we need is very simple. It's a platform to bring everyone together and having a discussion and a dialogue in order to come out with a conclusion idea, what are the priorities, what it needs to be done first, and it can be done later, what are the projects that it can be done. And it, can, it is possible because I have shown you that uh, this has been applied to other projects as well. This is one of the examples that um, the government land can also turn into the promenade. This is the Bank of Thailand. And the Printing North factory has already been relocated to the outside of the city. And the Bank of Thailand has an initiative to turn this into the museum. So we won the design competition and turned the whole thing into the, together with architect, to turn the, 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 the ground floor and the second floor to be like a public space, like a plaza that can bring the people from the street to the river and connecting to the historical building on the right. And inside, it become like a library and learning center. This is the way that we think that uh, public land that belong to the government, there are many along the river. Why don't we utilize that by providing the functions with the public uh, spaces without obstructing op and, 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 and destroying the, the, the river? So there are many solutions, and this could be another solution. Last year, we took another initiative with the Thailand Creative and Design Center to provide something out of the box, because we've been discussing about how we're gonna provide the public space along the river, how we're gonna increase green, green in the city. So we think that the board itself has a potential because it's representing and very, um, uh, um, uh, well received with the people along the river. And we combine the green with the boat. And they travel along the boat and we think that uh, it can become the catalyst for change if we making the public space along the river by using the boat. And then the inland can be benefit from it. And then we start to looking at the inland development later. So we organize like um, seven, um, nine days um, mock-ups and invite people to enjoy and try on how it's like to be in the boat, where you can also watching the movie, having the exhibition, and the kids can play around. And we're also asking around with the people. Some people have an idea that why don't we connect it to, to be more even bigger floating park. เราอีกประเด็นหนึ่งเราก็มองว่าแม่น้ําเนี่ยมันเป็นพื้นที่เอ่อธรรมชาติที่อยู่ใจกลางเมืองเลยแต่ว่าคนเนี่ยไม่
ําได้ในการไม่ว่าจะการร่องเรือหรือว่าการที่เราต้องใช้ไอเดียมาใหม่เนี่ยมันทําให้ทุกคนมีความครีเอทีฟนะครับพื้นที่สีเขียวไม่จำเป็นต้องอยู่บนบกก็ได้อยู่ที่น้ําก็ได้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยอยู่ที่ไหนก็ได้ให้ให้สวนสาธารณะลอยไปวิ่งไปวิ่งมาบนแม่น้ํานะคะแล้วก็ให้ชุมชนได้สัมผัสอะไรอย่างเงี้ยใครตัวไหนต้องการก็ขยับไปเรื่อมอยู่ตรงนู้นแล้วใครต้องการก็ขยับมาตรงนี้ตามเวลาก็ตามแต่แล้วก็เวลาเราจะเปลี่ยนทีมก็ไม่ยากนะซึ่งสิ่งเหล่านี้นะครับถ้าเรามีเยอะๆก็เป็นจุดขายหนึ่งของอประเทศไทยก็ผมรู้สึกว่ามันเป็นงานที่มันแสบสันดีฮะอย่างน้อยๆผมว่ามันเป็นการจุดประกายที่จะทําให้คนได้เข้ามาลองใช้แล้วก็ได้สัมผัสอย่างอื่นที่ไม่ใช่เท่าที่มันมีอยู่ครับว่าเราไม่ได้เห็นแม่น้ําในบริบทนี้มานานแล้วคิดว่าถ้ามันมีพื้นที่คล้ายๆกันเนี่ยเยอะกว่านี้มันก็น่าจะช่วยให้แม่น้ําหรือว่าคนพื้นดินต่างๆเนี่ยมันคอนเนคกันมากขึ้น We love also the floating park initiative is something that we we would like to see more and more in c h a o Phraya and we hope that this can come back. เรือลอยน้ำหรือสุดท้ายลอยน้ำอันนี้มันอาจจะเป็นการส่งสัญญาหรือส่งข้อความถึงโอกาสความเป็นไปได้อีกอันหนึ่งที่กำลังบอกกับสังคมว่าเรือก็ยังสามารถที่จะเป็นอีกทางเลือกหนึ่งของการเพิ่มพื้นที่สีเขียวหรือพื้นที่สาธารณะให้กับเมืองได้สามารถนำพาผู้คนมาชื่นชมและใช้ประโยชน์จากแม่น้ำได้แล้วมันก็อาจจะนำพาผู้คนไปลองชมทัศนียภาพแล้วก็เยี่ยมเยียนชุมชนริมน้ำที่มันมีคุณค่ามีของดีที่มันยังหลงเหลืออยู่แล้วผมว่าถ้าเราร่วมมือกันภาครัฐเอกชนทางสังคมเนี่ยมันก็มีมีความเป็นไปได้ที่เราจะหันกลับมาฟื้นฟูแม่น้ำเจ้าพระยาร่วมกันอย่างยั่งยืนต่อไปในอนาคต So this uh, floating park initiative. At first, we thought that it could just become like a exhibition for nine days, but uh, now we're submitting um, for acquire the grant from the government authorities, and we we hope that we're gonna get the grant. And we, if we get the grant, it will be like a permanent. We're gonna buy the boat, and we'll be probably you can visit the the boat, uh, the floating park next year if we if we get the grant. Those are the projects that I've been doing, and if you can realize and see that actually society is full with problems, the problems that is a, is a calling for someone who has the courage and ability to step in and make some changes. To make some changes, someone might use power, <coughs> weapon, forces, bribe, reward to to make some change. But it's not ours. I think, as a profession, what we have is also the weapon. We have the pencil and the paper. It's the weapon for changes that we all already have. Like the very important person has once said, "With great power, it comes great responsibility." You know, Uncle Ben. Yeah, everyone knows Uncle Ben. I think. If you think about that, architect has a is is his a very privileged uh, profession. Because people put a lot of faith and hope in us to be the one who negotiate for for the people, negotiating with the powerful people in the government and private sector, to be able to protect the public interest, and to making sure that people life can be better. If we don't do it, who else can? But we need to remember that in order to create a very sustainable and inclusive society. We need to share this weapon to others, to the people, and let them draw their dreams and write out their dreams. And we will be the one who facilitate that dream to become the realities. And yeah, at the end, we found the boys. And what we learn is that if we persist in realizing the dream and won't give up hope, we will succeed. I won't give up hope in my city as well. This is I took the canoe in uh, one of the canal with a group of friends to look around the beauty of the city that still remain. There are so many places in the city that are waiting to be discovered, many challenges to be resolved, and many people to have a great conversation with to create a co-creation. To create an inclusive society for everyone, and yeah, at the end we hope that uh, this could be 
the inclusive society. So what is calling you? Thank you. <laughs>